Baruch Dayan HaEmetz, we praise the judge of truth. Let us begin with Psalm 121. Asai enai el haharim me ayin yavo ezri. Ezri me im adonai ose shamayim va'aretz. Al yiten lamot raglacha, al yanum shomracha. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomracha, adonai tzircha ayad yiminecha. Yomam hashemesh lo yakerka v'yarech belayla. Adonai shmarcha mikol ra yishmoret nafshecha. Adonai shmar tzedcha uvoecha me'ata va'ad olam. I lift up my eyes unto the mountains, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot give way, your protector will not slumber. See, the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike thee by day, nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. God will guard your soul, your going and your coming, now and forever. Death has taken your, your dear, your beloved Peter Weiner. Hebrew name is Pesach. Friends grieve in their darkened world, in their silence there is lamentation, in their tears there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For Pete's love that united many, many people in life and which death cannot sever. For his companionship that was shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of his heart and mind which brought joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all of these and more, we give our thanks to God. It is a time of grief and so again we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures from Sefer Tehillim from the Book of Psalms. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Together let us recite the 23rd Psalm in English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is a privilege to call forward many to eulogize your, your dear Pete in so many ways. First, we call forward Megan, Margalit, going to say a few words um, for my Aunt Harriet. Um, she sent a little passage to us, so her passage is, Dear, dear family and friends, I know I can only say a few words during my time limit, but I must tell you all that my heart is broken of the loss of my brother of 65 years. He was, a truly, one, he was truly wonderful to me, and I will sincerely miss him. I'm so grateful that he was in my life. Love, Harriet. very, very hard when you're asked to speak of words of a, your grandfather. So I was very, very lucky as a teenager 
I was the first grandchild. They never thought they were going to have their first grandchild born as a teenager, but uh, they, they had that. So I was welcomed into this family. I, I don't have grandparents that are better than grandma and grandpa were and how they treated me. So grandpa, we greatly, greatly miss. We love them all. Dalton, please. So me and Cole and Amy didn't really get a chance to know Grandpa for as long as everyone else, but he's welcomed us into the family along with Marilyn. He's treated us like that we were always part of it always there with a story about eating lobster in New England or some other silly joke to tell us and just want to say that I wish I could have known him longer he was a great man for what I did see of him and uh, it's a shame that he's gone but I'm sure he's in a better place now Brooke Braha. Okay. This is a day I have dreaded for a long time. feel as if life was just getting started for you. I cannot express how much love I have for you, Grandpa. You were truly a gentle, kind, considerate, passionate, and genuine soul. Your amazing spirit will always live on within our family. I will miss your laugh the most. Your laugh was the best and contagious. Your smile lit up a room. Your witty and punny humor will never or never went unnoticed. Your advice given to me helped me, me, me become the teacher I am today. Not only will I miss all of these things about you, I will simply miss you. I'll miss your hugs and your presence. I feel as if I'll be searching for you when our family gathers and wondering where you are. But I truly know you will always be in our hearts and on our minds. I want you to know that we will take care of Grandma. We will keep her safe and be sure to drive her to her hair appointments. I can't promise we will sleep in the car like you did or read a thousand page book within two hours, but I will always show up for her. We will always show up for her like you did. A caregiver, a lifelong advocate for all people, a napper, a reader, and a best friend, a role model, a teacher, and most importantly, my grandpa. I'm so lucky to have you in my life for this long, and I will truly miss you every day. I love you more than your coffee cake. <laughs> Marissa Rita. We all go through life with the expectation that someday we're going to lose our grandparents. It's life's sad reality, made all the more difficult when your grandfather was as remarkable as mine was. 
Peter Weiner was one of my biggest supporters. He called wishing me good luck before the first day of my big girl job, kept up with my always changing interests, and never forgot to conclude our calls with a warm, love you kid. I'll miss the wide-eyed, goofy look on his face as he waits for pun haters like myself to laugh at his joke. I'd say I'd miss Grandpa slipping me a $5 bill after finding the Passover matzah, but I haven't found the matzah in 10 years. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> I'll miss the time and care he put into each home-cooked meal, from his famous coffee cake at Thanksgiving, latkes at Hanukkah, and matzah ball soup at Passover. He brought our family closer with every single meal. Most of all, though, I'll miss the stories he shared. It was during these conversations that I felt most connected to my grandfather. But I know that our family will continue to create our own stories. And I know that in one way or another, Grandpa lives on in all of us here today. We carry on the family last name, whether we like it or not. Cameron has his red hair. Brooke possesses Grandpa's incredible caregiving qualities. And my dad, of course, carries on his pun-telling pun legacy and his ear hair. Grandpa will be missed beyond belief, and having known him is truly an honor and a blessing. We love you, Grandpa. Alex, Isaiah. As everyone knows, Grandpa was an avid Red Sox and UConn women's basketball supporter. Grandpa was able to see his sports teams win multiple championships throughout his life. As any sports fan, that is something to be envious about. As a Cleveland fan, I hopefully will be able to just enjoy one or two more in my lifetime. In addition to sports, Grandpa and I also enjoyed bonding over Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and the Hobbit series. I hope to share these same bonding experiences with my future children and grandchildren one day. <coughs> Grandpa's wisdom and authentic happiness are two things that always remind me of him. I hope I can be as wise as he was and make people smile as much as he did. Thank you for being a great role model to so many and you will be so missed. We love you. Cameron, Chaya. <laughs> Almost a year ago today, I wrote a speech for my Aunt Jenny's funeral. I came across a quote that described her perfectly and it just so happens to describe my grandpa perfectly as well. There are some people that bring a light so great to this world that even after they have left, the light still remains. Grandpa was such a light in our family and in the lives of so many people. I like to think that I inherited quite a few traits from him, being genuine, funny, stubborn, and most importantly, the red hair. One thing I absolutely did not inherit from him was his reading skills. He could read a whole Harry Potter series before I finished a paperback copy of Junie B. Jones. As I got older, I realized that my dad was also a lot like my grandfather. Kind-hearted, intelligent, <clears throat> stubborn, and started losing hair at a fairly young age. Still very handsome. One thing I wish he would have inherited was Grandpa's taste in music. I would take bagpipes and Beethoven over Five Finger Death Punch any day. <laughs> Grandpa's humor was one of my favorite things about him. He told me many things about life, but this one was my favorite, and I think he told it to all the grandchildren. <laughs> Excuse my language, he said it, not me. He always told me this when I would drive, or even when I first started driving, getting my license. He said, it's not you that I don't trust on the road. It's every other asshole out there that doesn't know how to drive. Although he was silly and witty, he never failed to show me how proud he was of me or how much he loved me. He has definitely set the bar high for my future husband. The way he loved my sweet grandma for 60 years is a love I strive to find. 
He was patient and did whatever Grandma wanted. And if we know Grandma, she wanted a lot. She loved him just as much as he loved her. He raised my dad to love my mom just the same, and I'm so glad I had such a, long rela a strong relationship to learn from. He was hands down the best husband, father, and grandpa. Not everyone is as blessed as I was to have such a strong bond with the grandpa, and I am forever grateful I had him around for 21 years. His loving heart, his radiant smile, silly jokes, amazing coffee cakes, and his obnoxiously cute laugh are what made him who he was. I'm afraid I'll be a little less me without him here, but I know I will be able to give him the biggest hug again one day soon. I will hold you in my heart forever, Grandpa. And I will always love you until we meet again. Go Red Sox. And to all of those words spoken as a prayer, let us say amen. We gather today for this solemn occasion. It's a reverent purpose to pay our last respects and a deserved tribute to Peter Weiner, dear Pesach. He was a happy person. Uh, this is why the tie. He was a big Red Sox fan. He read a lot of books. You could count on him taking yeah, 15 books out a week from the library. He told jokes over and over and over again. He loved classical music. He was a caregiver. He was a people person. He just loved being around people. He, he took a part-time job at Home Depot just to be around people. It wasn't that he knew anything about tools. I mean, the family joked. You know, it was a typical Jewish guy. He didn't know how to use tools. Last week, as the family and I talked about Pete, it was a reminder of many things, two things in particular. The trips I have taken to Israel, and the second, because he was such a people person, uh, it's a verse from the second book of Samuel. Second book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 14 for we shall surely die and shall be as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. 2 Samuel 14, 14. So what does this mean? If you've been to Israel, and next time you go to Israel, you'll notice that as you drive from Jerusalem down to the Negev, into the desert, or even into the Judean hills toward the Dead Sea, it's very dramatic scenery, and it's mostly just limestone and sand. It, there's very little in terms of real vegetation. It's just gorgeous stone-colored earth and rocks. But as soon as you enter an Israeli town, it's green. It's green everywhere. Fields of green, orchards. And what's the difference? The difference is irrigation. The difference is the water that has been spilt on the ground. The water made the earth fertile. And so it may be said of your dear Pete, your husband, your father, your grandpa, your uncle, your relative, his life is now like water spilled on the ground, which has made the world greener and more beautiful, and the world is better for his having lived. He poured out the affection of his heart upon all of you and many others who are not here in person. The well-watered garden of his planting was, of course, his beloved wife, Marilyn, his children, grandchildren, friends, cousins, nephews, many, many relatives, and he lavished water. It, it was a large extended family. He, he lavished water, he lavished love upon you, and you responded like young plants to water. He loved you all very much. 
Pete Weiner was born in Norwich, Connecticut, May 24th, 1938. His parents of blessed memory, Joseph and Diana. And he is survived by his younger sister, Mona. We spoke a couple of times on the phone. And she said he was a loving brother. And she said that Adam and Daniel thought he was the best uncle anyone could ever have. Pete and Marilyn met at the University of Connecticut and Marilyn said he was dating my sorority sister and I was dating his fraternity brother. We double dated and then he called me for a date. We met our junior year of college. We met and then two years later got married. July 3rd, 1960. And during their 60 years of marriage, they took care of one another and were blessed with a large and extended family, including cousins in Boston. Sons, if, if I make a mistake, I miss anybody, just you know, yell out, call out. That's what he would have done, correct somebody. In a good, in a caring and sensitive way. Sons, Brad and Amy, Phil and Jill, and grandchildren, Megan, Marissa, Dalton, Cole, Alex, Alex is married to Mandy, Brooke and Cameron. As we were talking at the synagogue last week, I was so overjoyed to know that this Meshuggah family gave Hebrew names to just about everybody, even people that aren't Jewish. And I, I do the same thing. At Jack's Deli, I got all the servers. They're not Jewish, except for a couple of them. They all have Hebrew names. I walk in, Rabbi, they give them the Hebrew name. It's just... It's a beautiful, lovely, wonderful thing. And so there's a connection to the Jewish people because of your mishigas, your craziness, in a, in a good way. Absolutely, in a good way. At Passover, they played matzah bingo, which I'd like to find out how that goes because I'd like to bring that over to, to my family. It's just a great idea. Marilyn said, our family motto is, we are family. When we first married, we were both working in the Connecticut State Welfare Department, and Pete heard about Fritz Mayer, who was the director of welfare, and he wanted to work with Fritz, and so he did. They moved, came to Cleveland. He worked at welfare for many, many years as a social worker and as a therapist. Pete worked suicide prevention on Tuesdays scored softball games on Saturdays and, and maybe Sundays, and then he played softball on Sundays. He was a committed, loyal pitcher for that team, as Marilyn said. They were a truly dedicated team, and they were not very good. Marilyn especially loved the toothbrush joke. He had a, he had a tender heart, he was a tender hearted person. And of course, Pesach, which means Passover, his Hebrew name Pesach. Now, they love to play the matzah bingo, so. Jill said, I was going to use him as my lifeline on who wants to be a millionaire. Unfortunately, I, I haven't made it onto the show yet. And as, um, as you well know, a couple of months ago, he was diagnosed with cancer, or they found cancer, and breathed his last, last Sunday. And uh, now there's no more pain, there's no more deterioration of his body or his mind. There's just rest and wholeness and peace. Just as Shabbat is a time of rest, so too for Pete it is a time of rest and peace. Judaism teaches his soul was returning to God and to be with the souls of his relatives and friends and the ancestors of our people. We learn this in Ecclesiastes chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 7. The dust returns to the earth as it was. The spirit returns to God who gave it. One day all of us will join our dear loved ones in Olam Haba. Olam Haba is the world to come. Olam Haba is not a place. This is a place. Olam Haba is an eternal time. And so it's a spiritual existence, and you will be together in that eternal time one day again. Your memories are filled 
to overflowing. And we give thanks to God for this gift of life. And as you think of him, do things to bring honor to his memory. This is a new thing about the coffee cakes. You didn't mention that at last, uh, last Monday. And so is there a particular kind of coffee cake or just a lot of different ones? Sour cream coffee cake. Does somebody, somebody have the recipe? Oh my. So somebody can make it then, right? You make it, good. Don't ever let that recipe go. You can share it with people, but don't ever let that recipe go from your family. Oh, did he make latkes too? Oh, like that. This is a, a, not a vegetable in sight. If you count potato, I mean, potato a vegetable or is it starch? Oh, it's both. Okay, so there is a vegetable then. So, so somebody's mother would be happy. I ate a vegetable. Oh. Sour cream coffee cake. Well, make those things and do the other things that will make him proud. And uh, so his memory will be for a blessing. And let us do these things so that the world can be compensated in some small way for his loss. And so we, we say with tears in our eyes words from the first chapter of the book of Job. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach. He shame Adonai Mavarach. The Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. O se shalom bim Roma. Puya se shalom aleinu. Ve al kol Yisrael. Ve imru. Yahse shalom, Yahse shalom, Shalom aleinu, Ve'akol Yisrael. Yahse shalom, Yahse shalom, Shalom aleinu, Ve'akol Yisrael. May God who causes peace to reign in the high heavens, cause peace to rain down upon us, upon all Israel, and upon the soul of our dearly departed Pete Weiner. Let us say, Amen. Please rise for El Malay Rachamim. Into your care we entrust the spirit of our dear Pete Weiner. For you, O oh God, keep faith with your children in death as in life. Sustain us that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, O oh God, are with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our life, our hope in eternity. El male rachamim, Amitzem <laughs> Yasti Rehu Besay Tekanafab, La Ola Mim. Vayit Roh Bitor Hakaim, Et Nishmato Adonai Hunakalato, Vianuak Bishalom al Mishkavo, Vino Maha. Passion of God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to our dear Pesach, our dear Pete Weiner. He has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shadow of your wings, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. 
God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace and let us say, Amen. And let us recite the Kaddish prayer, sanctifying God's name, in memory of our dear Pete. Yit Gadav, Yit Kadash, Shemay Rabba, Ba'alma Divrach, Hirutev, Yamalich, Machutech, Vachai Echon, Viome Echon, Vachai Echol Beit, Yisrael, Vagala, Vizman Kari, Vimiru Amen. Yehe Shemay Rabba, Mavarach, Veolamul Alme Almaya, Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Vit Par, Vit Romam, Vit Nase, Vit Adar, Vit Alev, Vit Alal, Shemayd, Kudusha, Berichu. Leila min kol berchata v'shirata, tush berchata v'nechamata, da'amiran ba'alma v'yimiru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shmaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael, v'yimiru, amen. Ose shalom v'yimromav, hu ya'ase shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael, v'yimiru, amen. The translation of the Kaddish does not mention death at all. Let the glory of God be extolled. Let his great name be hallowed in the world whose creation he willed. May his kingdom soon prevail in our own day, our own lives, and the life of all Israel. And let us say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and ever. Let the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, be glorified, exalted, and honored, though he is beyond all the praises, songs, and adorations that we can utter. And let us say, Amen. <clears throat> for us and for all Israel, may the blessing of peace and the promise of life come true, and let us say, Amen. May he who causes peace to reign in the high heavens, <clears throat> let peace descend on us, on all Israel and all the world, and let us say, Amen. Lech kishilach Adonai, go your way, for the Lord has called you. Lech v'adonai ye'imach, go your way, may the Lord be with you. May your righteousness go before you, and may the glory of the Lord receive you. Would everyone who is here not wearing a ribbon please repeat these words after me, speaking them to those wearing the ribbon. May God console you with all who mourn, in Zion and Jerusalem. Amakom yinachem etchem batov shavet et Zion v'Yerushalayim. We will recite Kaddish, repeat, at our synagogue, Temple Israel, near Tamid, for the next 30 days. He'll be on the Kaddish list on Wednesday afternoons because the children need reps in the Kaddish prayer. They'll pray for his soul, of course, and on Sunday mornings as well and then the next four Friday nights. Whether any family members are in attendance or not, it will be our privilege to do so, and we will. And this concludes our service here.